Hey everyone, I'm Valdemar, Docker Captain, Sneak Ambassador, Cypress Ambassador and a DevOps Consultant with over 20 years in IT. I've worked at Amazon, IBM and other big and small companies. And now I help teams master DevOps, containers and cloud technologies. On this channel we break down DevOps, Docker and all things automation so you can level up your skills and build powerful scalable systems. Today we're diving into must-know container security strategies practical steps to protect your applications, secure your supply chain, and stay ahead of evolving threats. If you're looking to level up your container security, this is the guide for you. Let's jump right in! Now we're in 2025, and cybersecurity threats are more frequent, more sophisticated, and more damaging than ever. We're no longer just worried about compromised servers or stolen databases. Container security is now front and center. In fact, over 85% of organizations currently run containerized applications in production. But as container adoption grows, so do the security risks, and attackers have noticed. That's why it's important for all of us, DevOps engineers, security professionals, developers, and system designers, to focus on container security. In this session, we'll dive into why container security matters in 2025, key best practices that every team should follow, Practical examples using Docker Scout for local scanning and Sneak for continuous security checks in GitHub Actions. So let's jump in! Time is short and security waits for no one. So why does container security matter in 2025? Let's set the stage. In 2025, microservices are everywhere. Our applications might be composed of thousands or hundreds of containers, all talking to each other. This dramatically increases our attack surface. Why? Each container is effectively its own environment, with OS packages, libraries, and configurations. If just one container is misconfigured or running unpatched software, that single weakness can lead to a major breach. We're also seeing a rise in supply chain attacks, a scenario where attackers don't just target your code, but any external dependencies, base images, or third-party integrations you rely on. In other words, the container image itself can be a point of compromise. That's why we need to focus on what's in your base image, our runtime environment, the pipeline that builds and ships these containers. My goal today is to give you a practical approach to shift security left, catching issues early in development where they cheaper to fix, and integrating security checks into your day-to-day -day workflows. So what are the best practices for securing containers? Let's walk through seven core principles that apply to Docker, Kubernetes, and any containerized environment. Larger images mean more dependencies, and that means a bigger attack surface for attackers. Whenever possible, use lightweight images like Alpine or Distroless instead of full Linux distributions. Why? Alpine is only about 5 megabytes compared to Ubuntu or Debian, which are tens or even hundreds of megabytes. Fever packages mean fever security risks, and a smaller attack surface, which is exactly what we want. When pulling an image, never just write from Python version 3. Be specific, like from Python version 3.13.2, Alpine. This locks in a stable version and prevents surprises from unexpected updates or security issues. And never use latest as a tag. If you pull from Python latest, you don't know what version you are getting. It could change unpredictably and break your app. Even worse, an attacker could upload a compromised image under latest and your system might automatically pull it without you realizing. Always pin your versions to stay in control. Security isn't a one-time step. You need to continuously scan for risks at every stage. Development, staging, production. Tools like Docker Scout and Sneak help automate this. For example, with Docker Scout you can scan an image with just one command and instantly see security risks. Integrate security into your pipeline from day one, not as a last-minute patch. If your container has unnecessary dependencies, libraries or tools left over from the build process, attackers have more to work with. Instead, use multi-stage builds. Build your app in one stage, then copy only the necessary files to a final, smaller image. This removes debugging tools, compilers, temporary files. That means a smaller, cleaner 
and more secure container. By default, containers run as root, which is a huge security risk. If an attacker gains control of a root container, they can spread across your system. Instead, run your container as a non-root user by specifying user 1000 column 1000. But what does this actually mean? The first 1000 is the user ID, it's just a regular non-root user in Linux. The second 1000 is the group ID, which means it's part of a restricted group. By running as low privileged user, even if an attacker breaks in, they won't have system-wide access. Never bake sensitive data inside an image. This is a common mistake that exposes secrets if your image is leaked or pulled by the wrong person. Instead, store secrets securely in environment variables, a secret manager like AWS Secrets Manager, HashiCorp Vault, or Kubernetes Secrets. If you happen to hardcore a secret, tools like Trufflehawk or GitLeaks can detect it before it gets exposed. Never put secrets in images, repos, or logs. Scanning at build time isn't enough. You also need to monitor what's happening in production. Tools like Falco and SysDig can detect suspicious activity inside containers. For example, Falco can alert you if a container suddenly starts running a shell, which could mean an attacker has taken control. Watch out for other red flags like unexpected file modifications, high network activity from a container, containers trying to escalate privileges. By monitoring runtime behavior, you can catch threats before they become full-blown security incidents. If you follow these seven core principles, you'll be ahead of many organizations that are still struggling with container security. Remember, less is more, less complexity lower privileges and minimal secrets make for a more secure container. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and try out Docker Scout in action. Docker Scout scans your Docker images for security issues and gives best practice recommendations. Before we start, make sure you have Docker Desktop 4.38 or later installed, a Docker account and that you're signed in using Docker login, now let's say we have a sample Node.js application. Here is what our Docker file looks like. Here we are using Node 22.13.0 Alpine because it's smaller than Node 22. That makes it more efficient for containers, but we still need to check for security issues. Now let's build our Docker image. This command packages our application into a Docker image called my Node app with version 1.0.0. Next. Let's use Docker Scout to scan our image for security issues. Docker Scout will now analyze the image and highlight any potential risks or weaknesses. Once the scan completes, we'll see a report listing any detected issues, their severity and possible fixes. These issues could come from system libraries, base packages or application dependencies. Docker Scout might recommend upgrading certain components or applying patches to fix them. So why does this matter? Because local scanning helps us catch security issues early before we push the image to a registry or deploy it to production. Fixing these issues now makes our environment instantly more secure. And that's a quick look at how you can use Docker Scout to improve security in your containerized applications. Now let's see how we can automate security scanning in our CI-CD pipeline using Sneak and GitHub Actions. Before we start, make sure you sign up for a free Sneak account at sneak.io, go to your Sneak account settings page, find your access token and copy it. In your GitHub repo, go to Settings, Secrets and Variables, Actions, and create a new secret named sneak underscore token. Let's say we have a Node.js project. Our goal is simple. Whenever a developer pushes code or opens a pull request, we want Sneak to scan for security issues automatically. Sneak will check the container image to detect risks in the base image or OS packages. It will also check application dependencies to find security flaws in package.json and other libraries. To set this up, we need to create a new GitHub Actions workflow file. We'll put it inside the .github folder, then workflows and name it sneak.yml. This workflow automatically scans both our Docker image and application dependencies for security risks. Here we are using sneak underscore talking from GitHub Secrets. This is a best practice because it keeps our login details safe and prevents 
accidental leaks. We've covered a lot today. Why container security matters in 2025? Seven core principles from minimum images to least privilege. A live demo of Docker Scout for local image scanning. How to automate security scans using Sneak in GitHub Actions. But here is the key takeaway. Container security isn't just about tools or settings, it's a mindset. Everyone on your team plays a role in keeping things secure. Before we wrap up, here are some quick practical tips to improve your container security. Monitor runtime with tools like Falco or SysDig to detect suspicious activity. Keep everything up to date, patching OS packages and dependencies is one of the simplest and most effective security steps. Enforce security policies like blocking deployments if there are serious security issues. A single rule like this can make a big impact. Educate your team. Security isn't just for DevOps or engineers. It's a shared responsibility across developers, QA and security teams. If you learned something new today, smash that like button, it really helps the channel. If DevOps, containers and cloud are your thing, hit subscribe and ring that bloody bell so you don't miss what's coming. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop a comment below, what's your biggest challenge with container security? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Want to connect with other IT pros? Join our DevOps community on Discord, link in the description. Support the channel and get access to premium DevOps insights on Patreon. Check it out below. That's it for today. Keep building, keep innovating, and I'll see you in the next one.